Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another Hood episode uh, with me, your host Yuval from Solo.io and in this episode we'll be talking about the Envoy, securing Envoy, uh, best practices, a little bit of hardening, uh, what to do, uh, have a bit of a live demo like all of our uh, talks and obviously I'm watching the chat so if there's any questions anything not clear feel free to uh, type it in the chat and I can respond live and of course if you you know we this is part of a series and uh, we have two more talks coming up uh, about dynamic configuration via XDS uh, filters and advanced filters using WASIM if there's more content you'd like to see, also feel free to uh, drop us comments in the video or contact me or Betty Junod in our public Slack. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, let me present my slide here. So securing Envoy, uh, the first thing, of course, is a disclaimer. We will not cover everything. It's impossible. And you got to do your own research when it comes to security. There's a lot of options. I will review some of them, not all of them. Uh, so, you know, once you go to production, you got to read for yourself. So let's talk first about best practices. And these are documented in the Envoy documentation, essentially how to run Envoy uh, as an edge gateway, as a sidecar and the thread model. So let's first review the thread model and let me bring it up in the browser here. So as you can see the Envoy thread model, I'm not going to go through all of this, don't worry. The Envoy thread model uh, talks about you know what thread they're uh, taking into consideration, data parallel control plan, and the most important part here, talking about which extensions, how are the extensions written and are they intended to be used against untrusted downstream and upstreams uh, or assume trusted upstream. So whenever you use Envoy in your environment and you use one of the Envoy extensions, one of the filters, you can refer to the thread model to see if this extension is meant to be used in your use case, depending on if you trust the downstream or the upstream, usually it depends if you're on the edge or in the mesh. All right, so uh, going back to the slide, so this is the, the, the Envoy thread model documentation. It's pretty general. Let's talk a little bit more about Envoy configuration. And in here, uh, we will review the edge configuration for Envoy as they recommend it. And I will open that link in a second. We'll review the overload manager, the admin interface, uh, logging, uh, We'll touch briefly on what's an external versus an external request in Envoy, a little bit of buffer management and connection limits. So uh, let's look at the official documentation first, and then uh, we'll review it a bit more thoroughly. All right. So uh, this is the taken from the Envoy documentation. It has a best practices section. Uh, one is on the edge and one is essentially as a mesh sidecar, but we will review today this configuration. Um, let me open my version of it that has a bit more, I added some more comments, so it'd be easier to see uh, and understand what's going on. So this is my favorite editor, VS Code, and let's review this recommended configuration section by section. So first we have the admin section and here you note know for security we bind it to localhost to 1.7001 and that essentially means that you can only access the admin page if you are from within the network. You cannot access it from a different machine. <clears throat> ah, gotta have some coffee all this high energy. All right, so it's very important to set this to localhost. If you set it, for example, to uh, 0000, everyone in the network can access the Envoy interface and you can do 
some destructive operations using the inner interface. Uh, another thing, you can have an access log of all the all the access operations that happen in in the admin interface, and we will review this log in a second. So this is the admin interface. Uh, let's maybe do a quick demonstration of what it's doing. So one sec. And let's run Envoy with my Edge configuration. Let's run it in the background. Let's curl. And I'll explain all these flags later. Uh, actually, sorry, wrong curl. All right, let's do post 9090 slash help. We got to help. All right, so this was an admin interface access, and then we can see that the curl access the admin page, and you can audit who accesses the admin page uh, this way. So going back to uh, the slide, this covers the admin interface part. And now let's talk a little bit about the overload manager. So let's bring back the terminal here. Here we go. And let's kill Envoy because we don't need it. All right, so the overload manager is a component in Envoy that can actually, is meant to protect Envoy from consuming too much resources. And what it can do, it can actually shed load by means of rejecting requests until Envoy becomes not loaded, right? So the way it works, it has a, it monitors a resource and then it has an action and when the value of a resource exceeds a certain threshold it does a certain action all right so let's go over here the first part first the refresh interval says how in at what interval should we refresh the resource monitor and we have one resource monitor which is the heap heap monitor and what we say is that we don't want Envoy to use more than two gigabytes of heap size, right? So this kind of defines the, the maximum that we'll refer to in a second. Now let's see the actions taken. So we have two actions here. One, the threshold is 95% of the max size, right? So once we reach 95% of the max size, we'll try to shrink the heap. Right, so this gets triggered on this fixed heap value when it reaches 95% and we'll try to shrink the heap if it's possible and we will try to do some actions to more efficiently use the heap. Now moving on, the next action will get triggered at 98% heap usage and that will stop accepting new requests. So new requests will get rejected immediately and that kind of to protect Envoy from using because usually every new request has associated heap usage and that will prevent Envoy from consuming more heap that it, of the heap space that it should. So obviously you need to fine-tune these parameters to uh, your system. In a pod situation uh, the closest thing to the heap you want to set is will probably depend on the pod memory limit. So if you set your pod memory limit to two gigabytes, you probably want to set it to two gigabytes minus 10%. You gotta, you gotta check in your own environment. It really depends on how much uh, static stuff you use in Envoy. All right, so uh, this is the overload manager. And again, I'm watching the chat for questions. So feel free to ask. Uh, let's uh, continue. So we covered the admin interface. The most important thing was uh, this part. Make sure it's logged down to the local host. 
We cover Overload Manager, which is essentially you monitor a resource and take an action based on the value of the resource. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the ingress. So you can see here that we have a listener. We define some SSL configuration. We can skim over that. The important part here that I want to focus on is this part, use remote address. So this is a, a kind of bring us to the topic of what Envoy considers an internal versus external request. And we also show that in a, in a little demo in one second. The idea is that because Envoy is used both in the edge and both in the mesh, it would be very useful to know what is the original client address, right? The, the, so for example, if you're using a phone app and the phone app connects to the cloud and going through Envoy on the edge, you want the IP of the phone, right? So for example, if you want to do rate limiting or any type of policy that's based on IP, it's important that each Envoy will know the real IP of the real remote client, right? And what this setting here does, it tells Envoy to grab the address from the socket right, of the remote peer. So we'll connect to Envoy and that is the address that will be used uh, for Envoy as the remote address. And the way Envoy propagates this address across the mesh is something called an X forwarded for header. So it will append that address to the X forwarded for header. Uh, let's show a quick example. Let me prep the environment. So first thing first, we're gonna run Envoy here in debug mode. And run our little server here and what our server does, and you can see it essentially echoes the X4 for header back to us. All right, so in this example, we're using this configuration file where use remote address is set to true. And you can see that when we curl, let me grab my curl command here. All right, so we curl this. We connect to example.com with HTTPS. These flags are used because I'm using HTTPS and I want uh, everything to work like SNI. So I'm essentially telling curl, ignore whatever domain written here, instead connect to localhost to this port. You can ignore this part essentially for the connection to work. Here I pass an X forwarded for header. Now as a client, Envoy shouldn't trust this address that I provide because every client can provide whatever they want in there. Uh, but what you can see is because user remote address is set to true, Envoy appended the client address to the XFF header, right? So if you recall, the only thing this server does is echoes back the X forwarded for header it received from Envoy. Right, so this part here is the X forwarded for header sent by Envoy, right? And we can also see it in the debug logs. Uh, let's scroll down to the debug logs. You can see that Envoy appended this address to the X forwarded for header. And the reason it's important because Envoy takes, unless obviously configured differently, it takes the right most, most address to be used as uh, the original client address when use remote address is set to false, uh, which is usually when it's a mesh proxy. Uh, all right, this is a lot of information. Uh, oh, one sec, I have some comments here in the chat. Thanks for taking time. Yes, my pleasure. Yes, I also love Envoy. Uh, the config YAML does look a bit scary. Unlike Nginx, it's not meant for human consumption. And we'll talk about it when we get to a control plane. 
the Envoy configuration YAML is not optimized for people, it's optimized for a machine. And the fact that we can just write it here in a YAML, that's of a second consideration, right? So Envoy is really meant to be driven by a control plane under the assumption that the control plane would provide the, the abstractions that are easy to use. And we will talk about it more in our next session. Uh, so yeah, that, that's a great point. Um, but as you can see, once you, every, the nice thing about Envoy configuration, each part is pretty much isolated to its own unit of code. So there's not a lot of sprawl. Uh, so once you focus in on a specific part, it's easier to understand what's going on. Um, all right, so uh, going back to the edge uh, use remote address example, the, the reason that it's important is that without this setting, Envoy will not understand that it's receiving an external request coming from a user versus an internal request, which means it's coming from within the organization, within, uh, within the service mesh, and will use the wrong client address. And that has implications on policies that need that client address. The easiest example is rate limiting, right? So let's see an example where this doesn't work. So let me run an Envoy here with a simple configuration. Uh, so uh, a simple version is similar to the one we saw in the previous talks. It doesn't really do much. So I'll just, uh, you know, leave it as it is. Let's curl it. it. It reaches out to the same service. And you can see that the XFF header is now the one sent by the client. So Anvi assumes that this request is uh, an internal and it trusts it. All right. So this is about the use remote address. Uh, let's talk a little bit about, and oh, one thing I forgot to mention is that this was a very, very brief explanation of the Envoy XFF behavior. The full explanation is available in the Envoy documentation. So if you go to uh, the HP Connection Manager header, there's a section about the header manipulation and you can see everything that I talked about is explained in a lot more detail here on how Envoy uses the XFF header to determine the remote client address. Uh, there's another setting that I didn't talk about, uh, num trusted hopes that you should also read about. It's relevant if you have another um, proxy in front of your Edge Envoy. Uh, so yeah, before you know deploying this as your edge, make sure to read this page and understand what Envoy is doing, the logic, so you can correctly set use remote address and uh, num uh, remote hopes. And uh, num remote hopes, let me show you. It's uh, sorry, XFF num trusted hopes, uh, which essentially tells Envoy how many entries in the XFF it should trust. Uh, that are provide by, provided by reliable proxies. So yes, feel free to give this a read, but this is uh, kind of the gist of it, of, of explaining uh, kind of an introduction to the Envoy XFF logic. And XFF is, is short for X forwarded for, of course. Uh, all right, so let's go back for to the slides for one second. So we covered the first three, internal, external, I mean interface. Let's talk a little bit about buffer management. And let's go back to our handy VS code. Uh, let's talk a little bit about buffer management. Um, there are a few things related to buffer management that I want to touch. Let's start here. In the listener, so if you remember from our first talk, Envoy has a listener, connections get into the listener and then are passed down the filter chain and eventually reach something that uh, process them as an HTTP request sent upstream. So each listener handles TCP connections. 
and this is the maximum amount that a, a listener will buffer per connection right so as a connection and remember Envoy is a streaming proxy it wouldn't buffer your request unless you tell it to so this is the number of bytes per connection that Envoy will buffer now it has slightly different meaning in HTTP 1 and HTTP 2 because in HTTP 1 you can only have one request at a time per connection so if you use some filter that buffers the body and you set this con limit on the connection bytes it can effectively limit the size of requests that Envoy will manage now this is different in HTTP 2 and let's scroll down here to the HTTP connection manager filter has HTTP 2 protocol options and these are the buffer setting for HTTP 2 right so here we have max concurrent streams per connection for HTTP 2 100 so HTTP 2 can multiplex multiple request responses uh, aka streams streams of uh, HTTP requests into one TCP connection. So this is the maximum number of concurrent streams that Envoy will take per connection. This is the initial uh, stream buffer. How many bytes Envoy will buffer per stream, right? So you get here already, this times this can be the maximum consumption of Envoy uh, for all the streams, right? And in additionally, the buffer for the entire HTTP2 connection, right? And we have similar connection on the cluster because that's what goes upstream, right? So uh, very, very similar to the listener uh, buffer management settings, right? Uh, same idea. Um, yes. Finally, uh, down here, we have settings that globally limit the amount of connections, either per listener or global. And the idea is that Linux has some limit on how many file descriptors it's willing to have, right? And that you can configure that per Linux. And you probably want to make sure that Envoy doesn't use all the file descriptors available on Linux because then you cannot really do much of anything else on that Linux machine, right? So this is why we have these runtime settings uh, here, where you can define a maximum number of connections that Envoy will open, or Envoy will allow from a downstream. Uh, yes, and I think the recommendation is to set this to around half your Linux maximum, to account for upstream connections, you know, writing various files, etc. So, uh, this is a review of the Edge YAML. Um, there's a similar one for the, the Mesh YAML. Uh, you can review it yourself. This is essentially very similar uh, with different values. Uh, if there are no questions on what we just talked about and feel free to ask me anything about this configuration I will move on to and talk a little bit about how to harden Envoy to protect against uh, unknowns right so all this stuff that we just talked about in the edge configuration is covering stuff that we know right we know that Linux file descriptors can run out so we have this max downstream max connection settings right we know that our memory is limited so we have the overload manager right and uh, that's one aspect the other aspect is to kind of protect against things we don't expect maybe there's a hidden buffer overflow maybe there's something that can cause remote code execution so what we'll also do when running envoy and I'll space and I'll focus on kubernetes is to harden it in such a way to make an attacker lives harder in case something we didn't think about happens right so let's talk a little bit about hardening um one sec here <clears throat> 
All right. Here we go, our quick hardening tips. Uh, oh, I see that my picture is kind of in the way. Let me resize it. Make me smaller. Here we go. All right, that's better. All right, so. In general, you want to leverage, and I'll show how we do it in Kubernetes in a second. You want to leverage all the primitives that you can get. So first thing is to use a minimal image, right? You don't want to use an image that has curl, GCC, SSH, anything like that. So assuming you deploy Envoy using a, a container image in Kubernetes, then you want to pick a minimal image, Alpine, whatever you know minimum we can get away with to make sure that in the case that someone does break in it doesn't have a lot of useful tools to help it the other thing envoy doesn't write files by default unless you tell it to unless you configure logs to a file and in kubernetes you can configure them to stdl so you can use a read-only root file system and if you really need logs we can add a volume for these logs specifically and I will review all this in, a, in our deployment YAML. Another thing is to remove Linux capabilities. So when running a, a Linux program, uh, the kernel can have it, you can have several capabilities you can give it, right? You can think about it kind of like a breakdown of what the root user can do, right? So network settings, uh, debug other programs, all sort of capabilities. And Envoy essentially doesn't need any of these except maybe one, which I'll discuss in a second, so we can remove them. Another is to make sure to run your uh, pod with non root user. And that's important because root in a Docker container is also root in the Linux host. So if somehow there's a container breakout, um, vulnerability the attacker will have root on the host so it's important to run envoy as a non root user and uh, the last one is to use a position independent executable and that's really up to the vendor who provided you with envoy envoy needs to be built in such a way that I don't want to go too much to the technicalities but essentially in such a way that it doesn't matter what memory address it's in and that allows to activate a protection mechanism by the kernel called address space layout randomization or ASLR. So the the unless you're building Envoy yourself, uh, you you can't really change how it was built. You can't really change if the executable is position independent. Uh, in Solio, we build it very similar to how it's built in Upstream Envoy, which means that our executables are position independent executables. And also the Upstream Envoy images, uh, naturally. So, with that said, let's review a deployment YAML. I borrowed it from a uh, glue because that's the one I know uh, best. And see all this stuff in action. So, now, some of in securities, there's always some overlap, and that's actually a good thing because you want, uh, you know, if one mechanism fails, that another will not kind of disjoint failure domains. All right, so reviewing this, let's see the stuff that we've done here. So, first, we're using our image that's based on Alpines, doesn't have a lot of useful things in it, uh, just the basic glibc to run Envoy. Now, next we set up resource limits, you know, important to make sure, you know, if there's something unexpected, they wouldn't uh, kill other pods in the same host. Next, token security context, uh, we run it as a different user. This allows privilege escalation. We drop all capabilities and uh, we add back net bind service. Uh, this capability allows Envoy to bind to ports below 1024. Um, we can work around this, but in case a user wants, they, we add it so it can bind to port 80 or 443 on the pod. 
Uh, last but not least, a read-only root file system. This effectively means that if you try to do apk install to anything, it'll fail because the root file system is read-only. Uh, we have our own separate, separate service account uh, just for the gateway uh, proxy, just for Envoy uh, deployment. And the reason we do that is that we define the service account with Automount service account token set to false. And why is that important? By default, Kubernetes mounts a service account token to every pod, and this allows the pod to communicate with the Kubernetes uh, control plane itself. Envoy doesn't talk to Kubernetes, uh, so it doesn't need this service account token. Having it there is just one more thing that we need to think about. So by providing it its own service account, and setting the service account, uh, automount service account token to false, we mitigate that. All right, uh, and now of course keep a, a, a reminder that this is by no means an exhaustive list of security things you can do. There's a lot more, you know, SecComp app armor. Uh, I'm not gonna get into those. You know, do your own research. This is just kind of to get you going, get you started. Uh, all right, so uh, one last thing uh, I want to talk about before we start taking some questions is to stay up to date. So Envoy has, a, a re Envoy has releases that happen around every quarter right they're not feature based they're time based so around every quarter they cut a release regardless of what features are in it and the reason releases are important because they have implications on security and deprecation policy so the Anthem master branch is considered release candidate quality uh, so when we talk about let's say uh, there's a cve that's found in envoy where will how will you consume it right so the master branch will be patched with a cve fix and every Envoy a version released in the last 12 months months will be patched with a cve right so it's important to not fall too far behind on envoy releases right if you want to be on the bleeding edge you can grab Envoy from the master branch. If you want some more stability, you know, grab it from a stable release, uh, but just make sure to have an upgrade strategy to make sure that, you know, you're always no more than 12 months behind because otherwise you, your security fix, the security fixes will not be backported. All right, and you can read more about this policy here in the Envoy releases MD where they talk about the process, what's supported, what's not supported, end of life, everything. All right, so uh, one more thing is that before Envoy issues a security announcement, they send out an email, right? So they're not gonna tell you what the fix is because there's an embargo period uh, but they will send up an email so for example an upcoming security release of this uh, for these versions and you can see these are the last three versions that were released and then additionally it will be also for the master branch so you can see this was sent in june 17th and they tell you that on the 30th of june a release will be available Right, so to get this email, you need to join the Envoy Announce group to get the updates of new Envoy announcement, of new versions essentially. So that's uh, that. If you are managing your own deployment, best of all, upstream, it's important to join the, the user group. Everybody can join. Uh, it's public knowledge, right? So let's talk a little bit more about how, what else you can do to stay up to date even before the embargo period ends. So Envoy has what's called a private distributor list. Now this list is meant to be kept pretty short. 
and it contains vendors and end users that receive the patches before everyone else so they can validate that their products work with these patches. Now they're not allowed to officially announce anything or release uh, public versions with these patches until the embargo is over. But because they have, um, because they know about these things ahead of time, they can validate and make sure that everything works on the time for the release, right? So that's the private distributor list. And let's go over the security so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the security release process. And in the bottom of this document, you can see the private distributor list, the embargo policy that they have to agree to in order to be in this list. Uh, how to join and you can essentially join in two conditions either you're a big end user you know contributing to envoy depending on envoy or if you're a vendor so if you vendor that you, and you have a lot of users and you uh, use envoy outside of your company you can ask to join this uh, list and people in this list get uh, ahead of time notification for security issues so by using a vendor in this list, or if you're a big enough end user, you can try and apply as an end user, you can get advanced, um, you can, these vendors and end users get advanced knowledge and the patches that can, and they can validate them to make sure that on the day the embargo is lifted, on the day that the security uh, vulnerability is uh, made public, that the products are up to date. And of course, uh, Solo.io is here. Uh, all right. So this was my uh, preview for today. Uh, let me know if you all have any questions. Uh, also, please feel free to comment on the video and you know suggest topics. Uh, if there's enough demand, we'll extend the series more than these. Uh, uh, the episodes plan and of course feel free to send the series there's a handy playlist link to everyone who you think be uh, find it useful and uh, we love engaging with our users so feel free to join our slack and let me know if everybody has any questions thing you'd like to see thing we should focus on things that interest uh, the community our goal is really to make envoy more accessible and understandable for everyone All right, um, 